Yo, 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 what is going on, ROK Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder. And today, we're gonna get straight to it, and I am going to have this be the best video out there within Rock to let you know as a player or group on what are the most important things you need to ask and be looking out for, and how to go about doing so before you decide to migrate anywhere. Strap in, this is going to be a goodie and probably a staple for, I would say, millennia to come. That's just how confident I am. Okay, before we get started, as always, if you enjoy the content, make sure you sub, like, ring the notification bell, and if you want to join and be a part of our conversation, hit up the Discord. You can find a link to that in the pinned comment description down below. So let's start off with the most important thing. And this is more so the most important misconception that is done, is that more often than not, Players, when they're looking to migrate somewhere, are usually looking for kingdoms that are powerful, they're strong, they have good activity, they have a good amount of spenders or, or, or big whale players, maybe they have successful KVK records, uh, maybe they have a good uh, Ark of Osiris team uh, that competes in, in Osiris League, right? maybe it's consistent there. Uh, and for whatever else that may factor into that, in addition, I am here to tell you today that though these things are nice to look at, they are nice to have, they are not a need to have. There's a big difference between a want and a need, right? Players want this, but they don't truly need it because more often than not, what I'm going to explain to you is that if these things are done and you are looking for these particular areas of interest, you will passively come to find that because these things are being done and they're checking off your certain boxes, you will notice that the other things will just already come with, right? They will already be evident more often than not. And therefore, I lead into what I believe is the most important thing that players or groups need to be looking after. Or looking, I said, well, I guess after, but really looking at prior to them deciding to migrate somewhere. And that is, how stable is your kingdom? Because let's be honest, without stability, you're just jumping in from, you're just going from one hornet's nest to another hornet's nest. N nobody's about that life. We're trying to go somewhere, right? When you migrate somewhere, most of the time, you're either spending some money to do so. Or you are grinding for passports in order to get out. And that takes time. So you're either spending a decent amount of time doing so, or depending on your power level, you're spending a little bit of money to a decent-ish amount of money in order to get out and then go to where you want to go. So why I say stability is the most important is because the more stable the kingdom, and we're talking in a few areas. Let me point out why I think this is important. A good question to ask when you go to when, when you're looking to identify a kingdom is well how long has management been in place there why is that important because if you go to a kingdom in which management at the kind of council or the leadership level has been replaced multiple times within the past six months that's a red flag i probably would not want to go to a kingdom like that because i have no idea what to expect Right? That would be like you playing on your sports team and the head coach is getting, and you've already had three head coaches within a year. That's just not a good look, fam, at all. Right? And so, again, you don't want to really go somewhere that has what in the business world or just in the daily world of having a job, we call that a high turnover rate. You don't want to go somewhere that necessarily has a high turnover rate. Why do I say that? Because if you do that, you are you will then have a higher chance of going somewhere where the leadership is ran one way and the people that are selling you on the kingdom are doing so because it's ran this way. But that doesn't mean that could never change and you, and you might f go to a kingdom believing in the foundation in which that kingdom currently stands, but then three to six months later, now everything has changed because of uh, management instability. 
I personally would never go to a kingdom like that. I wouldn't want to go to a kingdom that has a track record or has high turnover rate. I would want to wait to go somewhere until I've seen stability where you have people that are in positions for a decent amount of time to therefore show, right? And I'm talking more so at the, from the top down, right? That's really what's important. So before we really dive in, sorry, before we dive into more of the specifics, let me tell you how you can go about getting initial information about kingdoms before you take it to the next step, which is starting to message. And then if you want to make accounts there to see how things are done. So you have to do this in stages. The first stage is recon. How do we do recon? This is how we do recon. So you're going to zoom out of your map. You're going to click on the globe and you need to first identify where is your group going? Are you looking to go to a season two kingdom? Are you looking to go to a season three kingdom? Most likely, it's probably going to be a season of conquest kingdom, right? If you're looking to migrate somewhere as an individual or a big group, only because that is the that's the season that's going to have the most amount of kingdoms in it. KVK season two and season three are always going to have a limited amount of kingdoms that are there. So if you're a solo player, and let me be more specific. If you're a solo player, you have a little more flexibility of going season two, season three. Maybe even if you're a small group. But if you're a medium-sized group, I'd say half of an alliance, which, I mean, not even half an alliance, it's probably less than that, right, because of the new um, cap limits. But let's just say you're a small group or bigger. You are probably going to be better off eyeing a season of Conquest Kingdom instead of trying to, even if you're like, oh, well, we'll just get some in season two and some in season three. No, just make it easier on yourself. Right, just target what is easier for you to get into. So let's just say we're going to operate within this realm of Season of Conquest. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at the off-season kingdom list first, and then you can go to the lost kingdom list and see those there as well. Now, if you're starting top-down, let me be clear, you're going to have to go through a lot of kingdoms. Why? Because there is nowhere at the moment where something is documented that shows you all the different kind of important management aspects of a kingdom. I will give you just a few examples. There are places online where you can go to and it'll show you, hey, here's the power, here's number of kills, here's individual power, here's alliance power, here's projected top 300 power for kingdoms. But that doesn't tell you anything about how a kingdom is managed and what the stability of a kingdom looks like, which is by far the most important thing. Remember, we are playing Rise of Kingdoms. This is, by default, a kingdom builder, right? It's not who can be the strongest or who can level up the fastest, right? Those are things that are not going to help you as an individual who's looking to migrate somewhere. You want stability. You want to go somewhere that, well, let me be clear. I would hope the majority, if not everyone, wants stability. This is exclusion of the rogues and just the anarchists, if you will, who do not care about any of those things, right? You are separate into the side because, you know, you're probably just wanting to go somewhere to take advantage of either a low dead kingdom or you just want to go somewhere to cause chaos or anything really kind of in between. So this is more so focused at the people who are looking to go somewhere that they actually want to call a home for a long period of time with good intentions. For that, again, you are looking for stability. Now, once you have done this, then what you have to do is start doing data collection. Now, what does this mean? Well, here's one way on how you do this. So I think I'm already here in 20... 416 as an example i am so what you'll do here is after you load in as kind of step or stage two you'll go immediately to zone three why zone three well because zone three usually gives you an kind of immediate ish indication on who are the most or how many active alliances are in the kingdom and then what their powers are and gives you some quick snapshot information so you'll go to zone three you'll count the, you know, you'll pull up a spreadsheet you'll say okay hey 16 pd bam this alliance bam and then you could kind of do a quick number of alliances excuse me maybe their power uh, and just like some quick information and then what you'll do is you'll click on each of these alliances by either going to the cf or going to a flag you'll click on the three dots and you want to get to this screen this is going to be your bread and butter 
Because why? You're going to be able to get the alliance name. You're going to be able to get the power of the alliance. You'll be able to get the territory number, right, for how many flags they have. Gift level, member level, right? This kind of a quick snapshot is a good area. Then the next most important thing is the alliance announcement board. Why is the alliance announcement board important? Well, I'll tell you why. Because it allows for you to not have to make an account in the kingdom and then level it up to eight where you can then see the alliance leaderboards or leveling it up high enough to where you can get access to King's Mail. Even though this is important, and we'll talk about this in a moment, the reason you want to go here is because most alliance announcement boards typically allow for you to put enough information in there to where you can get a snapshot on how that kingdom operates. An example, and I'll show this to you now. It says, welcome aboard to the Piquot family. We're an international kingdom and alliance. Okay, cool. Now let's zoom out. And then I'm going to go to this blue alliance over here. And a flag should be right around here. So I'm going to click on the flag. I'm going to open this up. Welcome to the Razor Crest family. Power requirement 20 mil. Uh, dedicated players who value. Let's see if there's anything here. When you are here in 16 RZ, please be kind uh, each other each other's outside. We're not going to use this trash talk. Bam, second main. Okay, cool. Right? So now we read that entire alliance announcement board. Let's just double check and make sure we're not missing anything uh, for 16 PD. So PD, migration, uh, open, please contact Sunshine, Black Rock, Savage Tinker, Fab, uh, Event Tinker, Fab, Black Rock, um, right? And then we have, let me see here, open migration, SOC, message Savage Queen, uh, Sunshine to be added to Discord or Crewman channel, and create a ticket, okay, cool, power requirement minimums, 25, be active, follow, did not make, okay. So now let me just make sure the rep, I got to check the rep saves real quick, just before I make my point. Uh, okay, so now we'll look here where it says 16, right? So you got... Uh, Sticky P, Miko, Corner, right, second in command, R5. Okay, so one of the things, a few things we notice here. One, there's no synchronicity. There's no consistency from one alliance announcement board to the other. Even just parts of the alliance announcement board, there's not, there's no, con, there's no consistency. What does this? What can this show at face value? This, this can show there's not really a lot of unity here. You don't see consistency or any common denominators across the announcement boards. Nothing that says, hey, we're family, or hey, we're allies, or hey, we work together, or, hey, this is a unified kingdom. Number two, you can also hammer this point home by looking at who are the people to contact when it comes to things like migration. Well, you have one alliance announcement board that doesn't mention anything about migration, and then you have another alliance announcement board that does have some people's names mentioned in migration. However, none of those announcement boards, and this is this is well, this will get to number three. Number two, it shows you that the kingdom is not really unified because they're not recruiting and doing migration recruitment in a unified way. It's more of, hey, how can I power myself? Right? They're thinking more individually instead of globally, right? Or locally instead of globally, right? It's more about how can I improve myself? How can I improve my alliance rather than how can I improve the kingdom? And then you look to the third point, which is that, and I don't really care too much about this. Some people say it means stuff and it doesn't. I, I tend to not agree um, where you have people that have the same, like, not, like they'll put the kingdom number or something or two digit number and then a tag or a three digit number and a tag. Personally, I will just say this, that whole idea can kick rocks, right? What really shows your unity at face value is not your alliance tags, because as we're seeing here is just one example, which kind of puts that whole argument to rest, is that, or makes it moot, is that you have them with 16RZ, 16PD, but the announcement boards, there's no synchronization across, right? Why do you not promote your Kingdom Discord as an example? Because you can gate a Kingdom Discord off. Why don't you have migration information when people join a Kingdom Discord that's public to them where they don't need access to do that? This is These are examples of things you want to look for when you are deciding where you want to go and where you want to take your account or your group. And also, I, I'm not in 2416, but at face value, I can <laughs> infer this information. And then from there, kind of give my dog a little love tap. And then from there, what you can do is you look at where is the information leading me to that is going to give me the highest chance of getting an idea on what that kingdom is like. 
For an example, they could also have things in their alliance uh, description where our announcement board where it says, hey, this is how the servers ran, or this is our expectations for the alliance, or hey, here's a Discord, uh, or here's a Discord contact that you can reach out to someone. Here's the alliance Discord. Here's the kingdom Discord. Um, these are important things that as a player or a group looking to migrate, you want to look for these consistencies. And then this is where you start getting to the questions you want to ask right because it, it depends on right how many uh, alliance are in a kingdom where do you want to go do you want to go to somewhere that has six or seven alliances in zone three three to four like these are things you have to figure out depending on what you're looking for but i will say as the common denominator of this video is stability that's what you want to look for so this kind of leads into some of the questions i think that are important to ask when you are going into a kingdom first and foremost you want to message multiple people in a kingdom, I will give you an example. You want to be sure that, for example, if I was going into a kingdom, I would message the lead for the top five kingdoms, just based on power, how old the kingdom is. So I'd probably message the top five leads. Then I would go into each of the alliances, and I would probably message at least two officers from each alliance. And then what I would do is I would go off the individual power boards, and I would message you know, maybe the top five or top six here, let's just say, as long as they're not a leader and not an officer in an alliance, I want to message regular members. Why? Because you want to hit people at all different levels. The information you're going to get from people in management and outside of management, you want to make sure that information is consistent. The feedback that you're getting, the responses you're getting is consistent. And that's really how you do your due diligence. Then from there, you message some people on the top of the boards and then maybe you message some people at the middle or you go all the way down to the 1000 and you message people from 995 to 1000, right? Maybe at the middle of the pack, 500 to 505. And then what you're going to message them is a few things. I think one, it's important to ask them, how long have you been in the kingdom? And what is your feedback? You come off and say, hey, look, I'm, I'm someone or I have a group of people that are interested in migrating. Um, I just wanted to ask some people that are a part of the kingdom, right? Or, or, or better yet, sometimes it's better just to say, hey, I'm an individual. I'm just like, right, because you don't want to tip your hat and say you're, you're a group or something, and then they try and give you a pre-drafted response or something. You want to come off a little bit more solo uh, because you're more than likely to get kind of a, a more natural or authentic answer. So you say, hey, look, I'm an individual. I, I just, I'm just trying to get some feedback from some players that maybe have been here for a while just to hear your thoughts on how the kingdom is. You know, would you be kind enough to let me know how long you've been here? And then what are your thoughts on the kingdom for someone that may be interested in migrating? A simple message like that, and then just copy and paste that to everyone, to the people that I, I mentioned you, mentioned you. And then you wait to get that feedback, right? You, you're, you're looking for enough pieces of feedback in order to look at the consistencies and the common denominators, right, that the individuals are giving you. And then you're also looking to look at what the comparison is between people in management and not in management, because you want to make sure those things line up. These are things that are showing you unity, stability, professionalism, organization, and that are actually going to be a place that you will most likely want to stay for a while. And then you can start, once you ask that initial question, then you can start asking if it's someone, right? This is, that's kind of stage two or stage three, I guess you would say. Then once you've done that with enough kingdoms and you've narrow, narrowed it down, right? Because you need to first figure out the kingdoms that you're putting on that are, that are making your list. Then you go and you message those people with that copy pasted message. And then you get to stage four at that point, which is you then do your second round of messaging. So you get, you look at the feedback, you're like, okay, I like this. Now you're narrowing it down again. Then you start asking some additional questions on next question. I would probably ask is, okay, well, how long has leadership been in the position, right? Are the people new? Have they been there for a while? Right? You ask, who are the decision makers in the kingdom? And then you ask, how long have those decision makers been in those positions for? Because you're trying to figure out where that stability is. Right? Red flag might be, oh, well, you know, we just had a leadership change. Previous leadership was there for a couple months. Now some new people are running the kingdom. Okay, that might be a little bit of a, of a flag. It might be a little red flag. But then if you hear, oh, well, you know, we've had the same five or six R5s leading the kingdom for the past nine to 10 months. Okay, that's actually a lot better and something that you can lean in more on to then maybe go and ask more questions from there. 
right? Then you kind of get into, okay, well, how do you manage, right? How's the discord? Another really good question is, do you guys do weekly meetings? Do you do town hall meetings for your group? Okay, awesome. Can I attend the next town hall meeting, right? I will tell you, when I run, when, when I'm running a project or if I'm running a kingdom, I always make my meetings public. I always allow for people to join the meeting, even if they do not have a, even if they're not a part of the kingdom, right? But you can just set the permissions where they can't talk, but they can just listen. That is really important because you want to give people a taste of what your kingdom has to offer so you could potentially win people over. Now, yes, if, if we're talking more like strategy meetings or things like that, yeah, you're not going to sit here and give away everything in one meeting. But if you're having general meetings that just kind of go into how you manage your state of affairs, very similarly to maybe how you kind of send out general king's mails that may not have any kind of sensitive information in it, that's totally fine. Oh gosh, I'm at 20 minutes already. Okay, so I could probably dive into a lot more and I may do that in another video. However, I just wanted to give you a good introduction on really how to go through selecting kingdoms and finding kingdoms that you as an individual, your small group or your large group may be interested in migrating to. What I will tell you is that in my experience, 99.99% of people that are looking to migrate do not do these things to any degree, maybe even to 5% of what I just talked about. Most of the time, you're just going on the Rock Discord, you got a friend that's somewhere, and they're just like, hey, come over, tell me a little bit about the kingdom. Okay, cool, I'm done. Stability is the key here. That is what we need to take the time to always do our due diligence on. If we do that, a higher percentage, if not maybe even the highest percentage of migrators will have a better time because then they will actually land somewhere that they absolutely love, they believe in, and they are excited to be there and therefore will increase their level of engagement and participation within that kingdom. That is what we want and that is the expectation and the standard that we should be accountable for when you are, one, on the side of looking for places to go and then two, on the side of presenting yourself to potentially receive future players. <sighs> It's all about raising the standard, fam. We can't just keep doing the same things that we've been doing for the past couple years. We need to do better and be better. And because of that, kingdom morale and health will drastically increase because of these things just from on one part of rock, which is the migration front. And that's only me touching on a portion of it. With that being said, I hope anyone and everyone thoroughly enjoys this video. I hope I was able to passionately and eloquently explain what I feel are very logical and very necessary reasons for how seriously we need to treat and take and how you need to take accountability for migration, especially if you represent a group. You are actually even more responsible for the group because you are someone who's the migration rep or the lead that is looking for somewhere for you and your players to go. All right, that is it for me. I would love to hear your thoughts below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Did you enjoy some of the points I made? Do you have different viewpoints? Do you want to add on anything? Let me know anything and everything in those comments below. That is it for me. Until next time, I'll catch you later.